We're here in New York for the intramural 2016 bipartisan debate, Donald Trump versus Bernie Sanders. My fellow Americans, I am running for president so that in the unlikely event that I am elected to office and there's not an immediate military coup d'etat to take me out of power, this country will engage in an unprecedented revolution politically to take on the billionaire class. Because it, in a society where the top 1% of the top 10% of the top 1% of the top 10% of the top 1% of the top 10%, for those of you not tracking it, that's point zero 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 one of the top 1%. This is a great country. This is a great country. This is a fun place. <laughs> and I promise, I'm killing everyone in the polls. I can guarantee you this. I'm killing everyone in the polls. And if I'm elected president, I will kill everyone. I promise you that. I can promise you that. Here's some facts, okay? The minute I become president, we'll start the Anchor Baby program, where we start bronzing Mexican immigrants and putting them on naval ships so that they're put to use finally. I'm just saying, bronze them and make it a real thing. No, it's no longer an offensive metaphor. Now I know what you're thinking. You know, I know what you're thinking. Bernie, you look like you're running for president of the Muppet Show. <laughs> That's fair. That's valid. People have said that I look like I was forcibly held down in a cotton candy machine. <laughs> that is true. But it happened while it was simultaneously being struck by lightning giving me a rare superpower where I am simultaneously completely bald and I have more hair than anyone else running for president. <laughs> Nearly impossible. Together we can... I have the biggest family. I have the best family. My family, there's not one loser among them. And if there were, we'd drown them in a sack in the Hudson River. <laughs> and I can tell you this. I can tell, I'll promise, I'll promise you this right now. There's a reason I named my daughter Ivanka because I want to fuck her. And I promise you this now. Family, you want to keep family tight? Well, my family's the tightest, specifically my daughter. I bred her to be so tight, and when I marry her, I'm marrying my daughter is what I'm saying. I'm marrying my daughter. I believe, I firmly believe that the country needs a figurehead like me as president. When I have time with my wife, we go up to Lake Champlain, we put on a Grateful Dead album, and just... We have it sail out off, off the speakers over the lake, right off the photograph, and we just, we sit in a little uh, sloop together, and we read each other statistics from the Bureau of Labor Statistics back and forth. My vacations involve hunting stray blood diamond diggers. I go, I go to Africa, my whole family, we get elephant rifles and we hunt human beings. And what we do is we reenact the euthanizing of Eleanor Roosevelt, which didn't happen. Which it didn't happen. My question for Mr. Trump. What the billionaire class controls, 40,000% of all of the money, of equaling $10 trillion, while the American working class people have one-fourth of one job for each person. Exactly, yes. How can you sleep at night knowing that so many other people haven't got the chance? <laughs> Mr. I want to answer the last part of his question first. I agree, I agree with Thanksgiving. <laughs> I support turkeys 100%. I support bilingual Turkey English schools. That I'm not good, because turkeys are Americans. Last time I checked, turkeys were here before the Indians, so here's the point. We're a great country, we have a lot of challenges, we're gonna win. You're gonna be so sick of winning, you're gonna put a shotgun in your head and blow your fucking brains out. 
You're going to be so sick of winning. We're going to win everything. And then we're going to go to China. And I love the Chinese. I love them. I like, I think they're fun. You can put little plates on their heads. You can eat food off of them. They're great people. But what's more important, I know they're our enemy. I know they're our enemy. I'll shoot them on sight. I'll shoot them on sight or I'll make a deal with them. Are you with me? I mean, Bernie, come on. Are you with me or not? No, okay. I, no, I don't, think, with me, I don't think a responsible geopolitical policy would be to take on the number two and over eclipsing superpower with a shoot on site policy. I don't, I don't support that in any way, form, or shape whatsoever, except that I am somehow idiosyncratically pro gun. Exactly. You already, and you know, by the way, I'll tell you the Chinese and Japanese already have a shoot policy, and that's all the photography they do when they're. <laughs> All, all I know that I'm aware of, that I agree with Donald Trump on, is that the Trans-Pacific Partnership is bad, and yes. the word huge is pronounced huge. Huge. It is huge. It's huge. And I agree with I, you. I, I think the, the I, know, I think anywhere. those are two huge things. I think, and I don't want to make a promise, but... I don't want to make a promise, but I want to say this, and I just want to say it quickly, which is that... I really believe, Bernie, if at the end of it, it's you and I on the dance floor, let's dissolve the parties. There's Maybe we could say fuck it all and, you know, just take, you know, do a, like a, a trip across the country. I would do that. I would go with you on an eight-week cancer road trip. We'll pretend one of us has cancer and it's our last trip. I'll even wear the bandana. I don't care. My final rebuttal is, what's your number? I want to meet you after the show, so... Uh, I don't know if you could give that to me during the show, or is that appropriate to do? My final look. I look. If I were you, <laughs> I would never claim to speak for a young woman as to what your choices are. I, I was 100 percent pro-choice in 1973, so with inflation, I'm now 420 percent pro-choice. 